Welcome back to my tutorial series on the Cyclops Synthesizer by Sugarbytes. In this tutorial, I'd like to talk about the modulation capabilities. The modulation in this instrument allows you to control various target parameters with various control sources. You can see some of the control sources by clicking here. You can see that there's an assignable envelope generator, a low frequency oscillator, and a step sequencer. There's also a wobble knob, which is a separate low frequency oscillator. And to make assignments with the wobble knob, you would click here and hit various targets across the top here, which I'll talk about in a second. Here you can see the wobble LFO assigned to control the cutoff point of filter number one. These three rows represent the three knobs of the device. You see three vertical columns here. Those are the three controls of oscillator one, etc. There's also a pitch control column, a volume control column for both oscillators, a balance control for the two oscillators here, and a balance control for the two filters here. When you click on a modulation source, you'll see the assignments. Here's the envelope generator. You can see that it hasn't been assigned to anything yet. Here's the low frequency oscillator that I mentioned here. Here's the step sequencer that is drawable here. Here's the sound control knob, which allows you to set a value for the low position and a value for the high position. The value for the low position is indicated here when the knob is to the far left. Let's deal with the wobble knob. You can see that it's pulsating and you can see that I've assigned it to a filter cutoff point. This controls the rate of the wobble oscillator. The various rates that you select with the position of this knob are shown in the micro display here. The knob actually notches to these quantized values if you have it set by clicking here in the non-interpolate setting. If you selected interpolate, it would gradually change its rate as you move the position of the knob. So I would say that usually you want your rates to be synchronized to the clock of your sequencer, so you probably want to run it in most cases with this off. The low frequency oscillator in the wobble section has a phase control here, so you can set the start position in the cycle that happens when you press a key. You can also quantize that low frequency oscillator wave shape if you like. Let's try making a few assignments. For starters, let's assign an envelope generator to control the pitch of a synced oscillator in the analog sync mode. Select your targets page and make the assignment here to the second control of oscillator 1. <laughs> Let's check the envelope shape. So we can hear the envelope generator changing the pitch of the synced oscillator. That's working beautifully. Let's add a filter to that. Let's assign the low frequency oscillator to the filter cutoff of filter number one. Here we have a waveform selection and now let's make that assignment. Click on the LFO targets and make your assignment to the cutoff point here. You can hear the LFO shape affecting the filter cutoff point. You can also have the envelope generator control the amplitude of the LFO. Or you can have the envelope control the rate of the LFO as well. Without this envelope mod of the rate, the rate is synced to the clock of your sequencer. Now let's check out the step sequencer. Let's assign it to control the cutoff point of filter number two. Let's activate filter number two. Let's go to the step sequencer target window and assign its positive control over cutoff point of filter two. Now let's go to the step sequencer and set some values. The step sequencer can clock and sync with your master sequencer. Interestingly enough, you can also have it clock to the envelope generator or the LFO. So not only is it clocking to the LFO, but its range is controlled by the amplitude of the LFO shape. You can also have it clock to MIDI notes. In this case, it advances one step in the sequence every time you play a new note. Some interesting possibilities there. Now here's the part you've all been waiting for, the discussion about the wobble knob itself. The wobble knob runs an LFO that is distinctly separate from this one here. Let's assign the wobble knob to a target, for instance, the cutoff point of filter number one. The rate of the LFO is controlled here. The interesting thing about this LFO is that you can have different wave shapes on each frequency setting. So I'm going to change the frequency setting. 
As well as having a variety of wave shapes, we have a variety of fixed values. So when the wheel gets to a certain position, it can just sit on a fixed value, which would look like these. The freeze value will stop the LFO wherever it happens to be positioned when you move the knob. The modulator knobs all have red buttons in their lower left corners. These activate the record capability where the movements that you make on the knob can be recorded as a sequence. When you click on the red button here, it opens up the recorder page, which is actually accessible over here as well. And the recorder is now going to enable you to record a number of different sequences. If you only want to use one sequence, disable the hotkeys button. With the recorder active, you can play a note and move the knob around. Deactivate the record button. Now every time I play a note, as long as the play button is active, the knob will go through the changes that you've recorded. You can have it loop if you click here. You can control the rate of passage and you can control the length of the sequence by dragging here. With the hotkeys button down, you can record several sequences, and you can activate them by the low keys of your keyboard. There's my first sequence. If I play chromatically one note up, the wobble knob will now follow a whole different sequence. I can record the sequence manually or draw it in with either of two brushes, narrow or wide. All of the modulator knobs have this same hotkey capability. I'm just stepping through the different hotkeys so you can see we have different sequences. I think this is a great feature of the Cyclop, and combined with the MIDI control over numerous knobs all at once, it really is well structured for a live performance. You can also simply control the rate of the wobble knob with the hotkeys by going to this page and activating the hotkeys button here. So now chromatic movements in the lowest octave enable you to control the speed of the LFO. This is very good when it comes to detailed speed changes when you're writing sequences. I'm going to leave it there for now, but I'm going to wrap up the Cyclops series in one more episode where I talk about the amount control, the sound knob, and the effects department. I'm Don Garba. Thanks for watching. <laughs>